Pretty significant NFL news today as the Washington Commanders announced that owners Dan and Tanya Snyder have hired Bank of America Securities to consider potential transactions of the team. Whoa. This on the heels of a Forbes report this morning that Washington will be for sale. And it could be, at the end of the day, full autonomy. It could be a minority stake. There is no doubt about it. Daniel Snyder is going to sell. And it's about time. Because when you take a look at Daniel Snyder and the Washington Commanders and everything that has been reported in terms of the misogynistic behavior in the workplace and how awful he is to work for and specifically the treatment of women, which is absolutely grotesque, there is no doubt that he is going to be forced to sell. And this is why I gave Jim Irsay so much credit for breaking ranks at the owners meetings a few weeks ago because someone needed to say it out loud. Daniel Snyder, the worst. Daniel Snyder needs to go. Daniel Snyder, the way he treats the people who work for him, it's deplorable. He's also horrendous and horrific as an owner in general. The old Washington Redskins, that was one of the most popular franchises in all of sports. Snyder has ruined everything with his meddlesome and clueless ways, and Washington has been an irrelevant franchise. You used to fight over divorces, over tickets, season tickets for Washington football for years. There was a waiting list back in the day that was 50 years long, 50 years just to get on the wait list. Now you could walk up and buy a ticket on the day of the game. This is a fiasco. This is a mess. Daniel Snyder needs to go. And today was a great day for the Washington, D.C. football fan and for the NFL. Jump on him early? Absolutely, Bryce Harper, who got the party started early and often in Philadelphia. And just like that, the Phillies, two wins away from a world championship. That right there is the ultimate hang em. Bango. Lance McCullers, the off-speed stuff, the curveball was just atrocious. Unless you're a Philly batter or a Philly fan or rooting against the Astros, and it was absolutely glorious. Bryce Harper set the tone. The Phillies launched five home runs in a dominant, lopsided World Series victory last night to take game three. And my guy Bryce Harper is on a heater. You know I live for Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Judge in the regular season and Steph Curry and Giannis Antetokounmpo. There's nothing sweeter in sports right now than the way Bryce Harper has swung the bat as you see on the screen when you take a look at his domination this postseason. And you've got the Eagles at 7 low. The Astros got blasted 7-0 by the Philadelphia Phillies last night. Listen, good times all the way around. And I told you on Time to Shine last night that the rainout favored Philly because this way Noah Syndergaard didn't have to pitch game three. Instead, it was Ranger Suarez, and he threw five shutout innings, and he was fantastic. And, oh, by the way, Philly's going to win again tonight. The bats are going to be on fire again. Harper's going to hit another homer. Schwarber's going to hit another homer. Hoskins going to hit another homer. And Aaron Nola, an ace. And I think Christian Javier is a really solid pitcher, but something special going on with the Phillies. Bats are amazing. Crowd is amazing. And I can't wait until the Philadelphia Phillies bash the Astros again tonight. No. Nobody's going to move on. Good for ESPN's Nick Ferdell holding his own there, trying to explain the ramifications of the post to Kyrie Irving. A post, as Ferdell said, that was anti-Semitic. And this exchange was on Saturday. The link and support of a movie filled with anti-Semitism was on Thursday. And there has been no discipline. Oh, sure. Nets owner Joe Tsai tweeted on Friday that it won't be tolerated. The NBA released a statement on hate speech. And yesterday, to me, was the final straw. The NBA's Players Association had its own statements. And it mentioned that anti-Semitism wouldn't be tolerated. That's great. But you cannot find the words Kyrie Irving anywhere on the release. 
One might wonder if that's because Kyrie is the vice president of the Players Association. So Kyrie Irving is allowed to spew and promote anti-Semitism without consequence? Sad. It's frustrating. It's infuriating. It's wrong on every single level. And people need to stop tap dancing. Stop hedging. Thank goodness our friend Charles Barkley used his platform on Inside the NBA to hit it right last night. And I'm going to say it again, and this is the only way to say it. Kyrie Irving is an anti-Semite. This is not about lack of education or a mistake. You know those expressions excusing Deshaun Jackson's anti-Semitic comments a couple of years ago drove me insane. And Kyrie should be punished. And I'm not saying throw him out of the league, but a suspension is a must. A fine is a must. Discipline Kyrie and let the world know that it is not okay to show hatred for a people based upon their religion. The NBA has suspended and fined players, executives, and owners for comments that have been against African Americans and Asians. They've done the same for commentary that is homophobic and anti-women. Heck, Myers Leonard was fined for anti-Semitic comments. So you tell me, what's the difference? Where's the message? Charles Barkley was brilliant on television on this topic last night, saying how it just makes no sense for an African-American like Kyrie to promote Jewish hate. I love Seinfeld. One of my all-time favorite episodes is the anti-dentite one where Jerry gets accused of being, as Kramer said it, a rabid anti-dentite. And the episode ends with Deborah Messing's character saying she hates all dentists. Get rid of them all. With the blacks and the Jews. The joke landed because the humor is based on commonality. Being murdered, discriminated against, based upon race or religion. Sports should be the ultimate place, the great place to come together. People from all backgrounds and religions and races and views. The NBA is telling the world it's okay to hate and promote the hatred specifically of Jews. Where is Adam Silver? Where is the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver? It's beyond disappointing. It's unacceptable. It's disgraceful. Welcome back. Time to shine. We have a whiteboard. We're going to use it. The first college football playoff rankings are out, and honestly, (laughs) they're stunning. Tennessee, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson are in the top four, with Michigan and Alabama rounding out the top six. So the initial college football playoff rankings are, I'll tell you what this is. It is insane. Absolutely, positively insane. Insane. Sheer insanity. I mean, and I know every year I say, well, it's it's just a vehicle to get people like me on shows like this to talk about college football, and it doesn't really matter. But what the hell is this? By the way, I'd put Georgia number one. Just me. And how in the world is Michigan not in the college football playoffs? I mean, how do you look at what they've done, what they've accomplished, and say, Clemson ahead of Michigan? And I don't want to hear, well, Adam, hold on, it doesn't matter. I mean, Clemson, look at their schedule. The ACC, relatively speaking, is not that good. They could run the table. And that means the Tennessee-Georgia loser. That means that the Michigan-Ohio State loser is going to end up being out and Clemson's going to be in. So I am petrified that this is absolutely insane and flat out wrong. Saying in college football. Number one, Tennessee, versus number three, Georgia on CBS is going to be glorious. Absolutely, positively glorious. This is the game of the year. So fired up we have it on CBS coming up on Saturday. And I think Tennessee is just dynamite. The offense is outstanding. They are excellent in every phase. But if you don't think Georgia is going to use those aforementioned rankings as a motivational tool for this week. Let me tell you something right now. You know Kirby Smart's going to be all over that. 
I think that Georgia is just a little bit better than Tennessee. You heard me just say I would have ranked them number one. They have championship experience. They play great defense. This is going to be a classic coming up this weekend on CBS. And I think that Georgia is going to win an epic fight. To the NFL, where the Raiders fell to 2-5 and five after a shutout loss on Sunday. So the Raiders are the worst. The worst. Congrats to the Raiders. You are the worst. What does that mean? This was the single worst loss of any team all season long. They lost... Got shut out 24-0 to Dennis Allen and the Saints. Raiders fans know better than anyone how Dennis Allen can't coach his way out of a paper bag. Andy Dalton shredded you. I mean, this, this is a disaster. Shame on me. Shame, shame, shame. I thought the Raiders were going to go on a run. I mean, Derek Carr threw for 100 yards. Carr did nothing. Adams did nothing. The offensive line was terrible. Josh McDaniels is awful. Here I thought that Blowing a 20 0 lead week two to Arizona is going to be the worst loss of the year. Or I don't know when they didn't show up in the first half against Tennessee. Or I don't know when Josh screwed up royally on Monday Night Football in terms of when to go for two and when not to against Kansas City. Josh might be one and done. This is brutal. Has Chandler Jones made a play? Patrick Graham? He can't coach his way out of a paper bag on defense. Congrats to the Raiders. They were supposed to make the playoffs this year, win a playoff game. They made it last year, the Rich Passaccia. The worst. How about the LA Rams? Three and four this season and did nothing at the NFL trade deadline. So, the Rams standing pats at the deadline was, I'm gonna give you a strong take. It was fine. I, I have no issue with it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm surprised that they didn't add a running back, but less need. Sean McVay, usually, as they like to say, it's the whole F them picks mentality. Look, they won the Super Bowl last year. They're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. They should be good enough to beat the Buccaneers coming up this Sunday on CBS. Can't wait for it. But it's not going to result in a parade. So doing no- nothing is doing something that's rather smart for the LA Rams. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.